Hey everyone, welcome back to the second session. Um, yeah, so we uh, started off this course, PC203, uh, the local church. Uh, we understood its origins. Sorry. We understood its origins um, in knowing that it's God's idea um, and, and that it's God's blueprint. We are to follow his blueprint. Um, I also would want to mention that, uh, you know, not all of us here would want to become a pastor or, or a pastor of a church and whatnot. But then nevertheless, uh, having said that, uh, this is for everybody, right? Uh, when you look at uh, the fivefold ministry, it doesn't matter if you're apostles, prophets, uh, teachers, pastors, evangelists, uh, you know, some of us might be called for children's ministry, but you're still serving the church. Some of us might be called for worship ministry, but you're still serving the church. Uh, some of us might be called for evangelism, uh, become an evangelist, uh, and you're still serving the church, uh, right? As a prophet, you're serving the church as an church. So the subject is for everyone. Uh, it doesn't matter which is your primary area of, uh, of calling is. Um, this is for all of us, right? Uh, there's a couple of uh, other things I just want to re-highlight from the last point that we touched. Is why should you be part of a local church? Uh, one of the interesting points uh, in the notes, if you look at page 8, uh, one of the things the pastor writes is, bodily parts do not float around, but stay together. Uh, right? That's the local church, okay? It's compared to a human body. So... You, know, just, you don't see a right hand taking a walk and says, oh, no, I don't like the right hand. Or you don't try to manipulate the scripture saying, okay, you know, the right hand should not know what the left hand is doing or what the left hand is not. So, so I don't want to be part of and all, all that. But <laughs> uh, they're still together in one, one body, right? Um, so it's very important to be plugged into a community, to a Christ-centered community. Um, not sure if we touched on community or a little bit but then yeah it's it's important to be part of uh, plugged into a christ-centered community because that is also uh, god's idea right and another beautiful scripture that i want to uh, read is isaiah 65 verse 8 this is mentioned in the notes by the way uh, isaiah 65 verse 8 a new wine is found in the cluster right uh you you just take a single uh pebble of grape you're not going to get much of it you can squeeze it there'll be a splash of its juice or whatever but then um a single grape by itself produces some juice but then uh, when a cluster is pressed together we have more wine okay and wine in the scriptures uh, is symbolic of anointing uh, as well so um if we grow together uh, in a community, in a Christ-centered community, we go from grace to grace, from, from different levels, deeper uh, levels of intimacy with God as a community uh, as well. So, um, yeah. So that is chapter one, the origins and its purpose. Let's move on to chapter two, uh, the purpose of the local church, right? The purpose of the local church, its mission, message, and methods okay it's mission uh, message and methods first off the mission matthew chapter 28 verse 18 and 20 uh, we, we very popularly known as the great commission right it says and jesus came and spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Right? Um, as I mentioned, uh, this is popularly known as the Great Commission. Uh, some say that hey it's not a great suggestion it's a great commission okay uh we like the idea of commission but then uh but we, we just try to take it as that as it's 
a great suggestion but it's not a great suggestion guys it's a great commission okay it's a mission and we are in this co-mission because we are co-laboring with god in this mission right we cannot do this without him right while he while jesus said this right he did not say uh he did not give like an exact methods on how you are to go about doing this right he didn't say okay hey these are the five steps to have a successful uh, local church or you know how go about accomplishing this mission uh he did not give them that methodology so to speak right but rather we see in the book of acts uh how god's strategy unfolds right um very simply with the preaching of the gospel people are brought into faith in christ okay simply preaching the gospel of jesus christ brings people into the faith in christ that is what baptizing them also means right it's yes it's immersion people are baptized in water but then also means that you're bringing them into this fellowship into this family this household right the church um so that's that's a simple god's strategy and what happens when the great commission is fulfilled what happens when we go about equipping and empowering people uh, when you go about discipling and evangelizing again in the book of acts we see when this is happening the churches are being built locally in different towns in different cities right so carrying out the great commission results in establishing of local churches and you read that through the book of acts and i'm not sure if you are doing the book of acts this semester or you've already done it or sometime next semester never know okay but it's very interesting an exciting book um but here's the thing so great commission helps us establish local churches and then the circle finishes once again the local churches as it's being built around helps in fulfilling the great commission so both go hand in hand okay so when we fulfill the great commission the local churches are being established and as the local churches are being established the great commission is being fulfilled the gospel of jesus christ is taken to the ends of the world right um so that is the mission okay take the message take the gospel of jesus christ and when, when that is done the local churches are established the natural dimension the physical expression of the local churches are being established and then as that happens um, the great commission is being fulfilled and then next we see the message the purpose of the local church as we see its mission now the message simply put the gospel we are to preach the gospel of our lord jesus christ in page 10 the gospel is the message of the cross of jesus christ the work that he completed and the salvation healing deliverance and redemption that is ours because of what he did that's the good news that's the gospel of jesus christ that is the message we as his church are to carry nothing else don't add to it don't take away anything from it don't dilute it it's as good as is in fact it's too good to be true okay? when you take the message of jesus christ what he's done for us uh, you know what he's accomplished for us that message is good enough we read that in first corinthians chapter 1 uh, verse 17 to 24 First Corinthians chapter one. Can someone read that off your notes, please, uh, from page ten at the bottom? Anyone? A second read from the Bible. Yes, please. Yeah, First Corinthians chapter one, verse seventeen to twenty-four. Go ahead. But as God has distributed to each one, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk, and so I ordain in all the churches, 
was anyone called while circumcised let him not become uncircumcised was anyone called while uncircumcised let him not be circumcised circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but keeping uh, Rosen, the sorry to uh, interrupt uh, so are we reading from uh, 1st corinthians chapter 1 or or are we in 2nd corinthians <laughs> Sorry, Pastor. No worries, no worries. Let me just see the notes. It happens to all of us. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Hurry. Yeah. No, don't worry about it. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry about it. 17 to 24, right? Yes. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Thank you so much. For Thank you. Right. So uh, Apostle Paul is very clear uh, in what he's writing to the Corinthians. Okay. Regardless of your audience, right? Uh, the Jews request a sign. Greeks seek after wisdom. Whoever your audience is, whatever they're expecting, don't change the message of the gospel. Preach them Christ crucified. That is the message of the local church. Keep it simple. Okay? Um, so that's the message. Uh, and then he goes on to say in the next section, uh, as which is labeled as the whole counsel of God. Um, right. So here in Acts chapter 20, verse 20, 21, and 27, it simply says this. How I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Right? The whole counsel of of God. So uh, as ministers, we are to teach and proclaim the whole counsel of God. What does that mean? We are to teach sound doctrine. Okay. Uh, what is the opposite of whole? Whole counsel. Partial counsel, half counsel, right? Uh, we are not to preach, uh, say, only on values. Yeah, diluted. <laughs> Thanks, Isaac. Yeah. What is simple, isn't it? I mean, you understand the whole council. That means we just can't take a little bit and, and just talk on one subject. Okay, just take, say, for example, grace. You just talk about grace and grace and grace and grace. Okay. Uh, and then ignore uh, the truth um, and the holiness of God and and everything else. I mean, there's nothing wrong in just talking about the grace of God as as is. But then, what about all the other aspects, uh, all the other you know attributes and everything? Okay, so the whole counsel of God is to be shared. And that's the sound doctrine. Right. In other words, um, First Timothy chapter four, verse six and sixteen goes on to say, 
If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Right? So we as a local church, why is it important for us to you know, present the whole counsel of God? Because that way, it's good for us and it's good also for those who are listening to us, who hear us, isn't it? And that way we are not manipulating anything. That way we are not missing out on the sound doctrine, but as we are doing it as followed. So when we see, when we present the whole counsel of God to our congregation, what happens? When that is done correctly, we are guarding the flock against every false doctrine. So when you're teaching, when you're, uh, what you're teaching and what you're preaching uh, is, is according to the word of God, you are guarding your congregation, your people from false doctrine right so when people understand truth they will be able to identify error and stay away from it so our job is to preach the truth Jesus is the way the truth right our job is to preach Jesus Christ crucified okay uh, this is a classic example right um, of a person who is trained to identify uh, a false currency, uh, a counterfeit currency, right? Uh, you are a 2000 rupees note and whatnot. So the job of this person is not to study all the thousands of counterfeits that are possibly out there. His job is to only study that the original, the authentic, the legal currency note really well. Right? Now, how many counterfeit notes are you going to sit and say, oh, I think this is a counterfeit. Oh, no, I think this is no. So when you sit and uh, when you studied the authentic one, now you know, okay, hey, everything else is becomes very easy. So when you, when you study the Gospels, uh, when our doctrine is sound in the, with the whole counsel of God, then what we've done is we've guarded ourselves from every other false doctrine. Right? And so that is the message of the church that we are to be careful about as well. It's not diluting the message of the cross, uh, not taking anything from it, not adding to it. Just preach Christ crucified and seek after the wisdom from the Holy Spirit. And then we are on the right track. Right? Uh, and then finally to the next uh, section is the methods. Hey, are you guys with me? Yeah. Uh, the mission, the message, and finally the methods. Right, so we are in page 12 of the PDF. If you have a hard copy, it's going to be a different page number. So, um, The methods. Methods we use must be aligned to the standards and directives set forth in the word of... At this point, uh, we are not... Um, it's it's not about the things that we're doing at APC uh, or, or you know the things that uh, well well practiced methods uh, etc cetera, etc cetera, okay uh, we're, we're very clearly just putting it across saying uh, these are the standards and the directives set forth in the word of God and so what are some of those methods uh, that we as a church are to follow and the very first thing is pure purity the methods we must uh, we use must be pure before God and man. We must not use deceit or manipulation to achieve our objectives. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> right. Uh, the methods that we use uh, must not be used to deceive or manipulate people uh, or to get things done. Right. Uh, with but rather do it with integrity, with uh, honesty before God, uh, knowing that we are accountable to Him. It is the church is His. Uh, when we understand, if we just simply understand that the church is His, uh, then I think a lot of things can fall in place. 
right? Um, we must be pure in the way we communicate God's word. Uh, we do it with sincerity and as doing it before God. We do not use the word of God to serve our own agendas. Can I hear another amen? <laughs> We do not use the word of God to serve our own agendas. And, um, and very sadly, that's uh, the case uh, you know, across uh, the globe in, in a lot of churches, that we use the word of God to serve our own agendas, to build our own kingdoms. Um, you know, yeah, I think we can go on. Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, it says, Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Right, we have to treat the word of God uh, with with a lot of reverence, uh, knowing that the church is His. Uh, it's, the message is very simple, and this method is very simple. Right, uh, be accountable before God, knowing that He is watching, and knowing that is His church that we are dealing with, and knowing that we are using His word. And you know, John one. We all know this verse. Right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, so if I am to present to you something as the eternal wo Word, how careful should I be? Right? Uh, how careful should I be in be receiving it or giving it to you? Right? Uh, I'll, I'll never forget this video. Um, so there's this tribe, uh, I think, in Indonesia. Uh, yeah. So, and they are receiving copies of the uh, like hard copies of the Bible for the first time in their own language. In their own language, yeah, it's just, it's a small village, uh, and this is the video is available on YouTube, by the way. Um, the whole village is assembled by the airstrip. And the video is taken from the time the, air, uh, the you know the airplane lands in, in you know in their village, uh, and they are receiving the word of God with so much love and anticipation, uh, and with so much of reverence. And and the head of the village uh, says, like, "He is the word. Uh, how can we not honor?" when we are receiving the word for the first time. And if you just have that reverence for his word, uh, a lot of things would fall in place, right? So that's the simple method of, uh, of purity, pure, uh, right? And, and as we come uh, down to page 13, uh, let one of our methods, uh, let it not be offensive, uh, yet without compromise. Now, we just read in, in First Corinthians, uh, one eighteen, uh, where is that? Yeah, First Corinthians chapter one, verse eighteen. It says, "For the message of the cross is foolishness." Another translation says, "The message of the cross is offensive." Now, you know, the message of the cross is offensive to some, but then that that doesn't mean, um, you know, we are inconsiderate. So, as an example, let's take for example. Um, what does it mean by not offensive? How can our methods not be offensive? Uh, so for example, my locality, um, it is populated with a lot of people from a different background, right? Um, say, I'm going to build a church. Uh, I'm going to be inconsiderate. And I'm going to, uh, you know, so as charismatic people, we can be loud. <laughs> um, I'm not going to have any soundproofing. Uh, I'm not going to have. Uh, I'm just going to let people park anywhere in the road, uh, and and whatnot. So all of those things, small details, nitty gritty things, uh, can be offensive considering my locality. 
right? Um, so our methods in ministry and our preaching must not intentionally offend people. Notice those words there, must not intentionally. Okay, that is, that's about the heart, isn't it? Intentionally offend people. Our objective is to point people to the truth in the person of Jesus Christ and the word of God. We do not compromise the truth, but speak it in love. Right? Like I said, we do not compromise. We don't dilute, but we speak it in love. Okay, so that's a simple method. Uh, is not offensive, but yet without compromise. And next is in demonstration of spirit and power. In demonstration of spirit and power. Demonstration. Uh, what does demonstration mean? Okay. I'm going to demonstrate how to do this for you. Like, you know, I teach uh, keyboard or guitar. If I'm teaching a, mu a musical instrument, I'm going to say, hey, hey, okay, this is how you are to play this exercise. I write on the board. But then for a student to understand, I have to demonstrate how that's to be played. It's not enough for me to just write on the board saying, okay, hey, these are the notes. This is how you play the C major scale on the guitar or on the keyboard. The student might attempt to play it, but then it will make it a lot easier if me as a teacher first plays it, demonstrates it, and then it becomes a little easier uh, for the student to understand, isn't it? So we as a local church, one of the methods is that we demonstrate this, uh, you know, the power, moving in spirit and in power, right? Um, First Corinthians chapter two, verse uh, four and five. It scripture from the notes. It says, "And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not be in wisdom of men, but in the power of God." Right? Think about Jesus. Everything Jesus did in his time on earth, he did it in the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? Uh, in the last semester, we discussed healing and deliverance. Uh, if you remember, uh, how time and time again, we, we stressed on how Jesus did it with the power of the Holy Ghost, right? with the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and when we look at Acts chapter 1 and 2, the commandment is very simple. Stay there. Right? Until you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will receive power. Right? So in demonstration of spirit and power is crucial. Um, it's very important for us that we remember that this is a very key um, method, regardless of the modern tools that we have. We have all these modern tools and technologies, different methodology, organization skills, and whatnot. But all of these things can never and should never be a substitute for ministering in demonstration of the spirit and in power. Right? We can have all the best technology equipments in this world um, to you to perform and uh, to demonstrate a certain method, but then none of that can be an alternate or a substitute to move in the spirit of God and power. Right? You guys with me? Okay. Uh, page 14, um, the next method, um, you see, this is just uh, complementary of each other. But if we are dependent uh, on the Holy Spirit, as it says, it's, it's, we are to be Spirit-directed. And uh, in the first session, I mentioned that the methods can change over centuries. The methods have changed over centuries and how we worship, how we sing, how we bring our offerings uh, and whatnot. And now we have internet and we are having classes online, which people would have never thought 20 years ago, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. The methods have changed, but the principles remain as the first century church where it's dependent on the Holy Spirit, we are 2000 years later with all these fancy equipments are still to be dependent on the leading of the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, as mentioned, 
multiple scriptures, uh, we see that Philip was directed uh, by the Holy Spirit. Uh, says the Spirit said to Philip, "Go near and overtake this chariot." As crazy as it may sound, obey the Holy Spirit. Right, uh, and this is again complementing the next point: strategic. And if we are sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit, and if we are obedient to His guidance, right, the strategy is a piece of cake. So we, okay, we will. So what what is strategy? It simply means okay, we have to be, we have to do the right thing at the right time, be at the right place at the right time, etc. That's uh, for our context. That's what it is. In the context of the local church, what to do? Strategy. Okay, how do I reach out to the city? How do? What do I do? Uh, what do I reach out? How? Do, what do I do in order to reach out to this to the online audience, and whatnot? You need a strategy, and you think uh, Jesus has changed over time, or the Holy Spirit has changed over time? He stopped talking, uh, right? You think, okay, this is the twenty-first century. Holy Spirit doesn't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Uh, what will Holy Spirit know about internet? You know, I have Google for everything. Uh, okay. Right. But if if our first step, if we can just uh, surrender and submit before Him, come before Him and say, "Lord, here I am. You've called me to be in the city. Uh, my church is here. You called me to be so and so. You called me to serve so and so." We just humbly, very genuinely come and say, I don't know what to do. You tell me what to do. Right? Um, like this very famous prayer of Je King Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles 20. Uh, Lord, all these nations have surrounded me. They're going to attack uh, our nation. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Right? So if only our eyes are on him um, as a primary method, uh, you know, he will give us the strategies, divine strategies, uh, doing things at the right time, a certain way to be at the right time, uh, divine connections, divine favor, and whatnot will be released if we are only sensitive to the leading of this Holy Spirit. And then, and because we are obedient and because we are sensitive, he allows us to be relevant. And that's the final point, right? We, he allows us to be relevant to our day and our age. Uh, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is all-knowing, all-powerful. He is wisdom. Right? He is the ancient of days. Uh, there, we cannot surprise him. There is no century that is ahead of us in the future that, can come, uh, that we can come up with that is going to take, uh, you know, surprise him, take him by surprise or whatnot. He has got strategies for everything. He is all knowing, all powerful. He is wisdom, right? Uh, Isaiah chapter 11, he is the spirit of wisdom. So it is his wisdom that allows us, helps us to be relevant in our day and age. Uh, the very last point there it says, we must remain sensitive to the culture without being controlled by the culture. And then it concludes by saying, God is greater than the culture right we must remain sensitive to the culture without being controlled by the culture okay uh, i love this uh, particular translation uh, of this verse from romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 but i want to read it for us from uh, uh, the message version message version um, more i just put it in the chat section so we can all follow um this is i think verse 2 romans chapter 12 uh verse 2 from the message version it says uh where is that yeah uh, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking it's talking about relevancy right instead fix your attention on god you'll be changed from the inside out readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it unlike the culture around you always dragging you down to its level of immaturity god brings the best out of you 
develops well formed maturity in you it's beautifully put isn't it um right so with that i want to conclude uh this session as well and i want to encourage us that as we go about this course and everything that we do in every ministry that we are involved in um let's keep it simple uh let's not dilute the message of uh, of the cross of jesus christ um church is his idea let the foundation of this course be uh, that understanding as well, right? And everything that you're doing, um, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you, to guide you. Uh, and we need that, isn't it? And uh, and encourage other leaders around you. Um, you know, bless them, encourage them, motivate them, uh, and ask them to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Right? When they don't know what to do, uh, do, you, do you know a leader who needs encouragement? Let them know that, hey, God's got their back. Uh, so, yeah, with that, we'll bring the session to a close. Thank you all for joining. I'll stop the recording now.